Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Health Forensics. And we're here to look into a subject of Health Forensics and that is Faraday cages. And as you can see, we've got a number of Faraday cages here and plants have been grown in them. And we're going to start with this one because this is how the Diphenbachia is supposed to look when it's grown outside of a Faraday cage. And this is about as good as I can get Dyke back years to grow in my home. I live in a home that is filled with radio frequencies from transmitting utility meters and cell phone towers. There's three cell phone towers in the area. And it causes growth retardation to occur in the Dyke back year, which is what we're looking at here. So that is what you should expect to get from a plant has grown in my home. So let's see what happens when you put it inside a Faraday cage. So this is Faraday cage number one. It's a complete cage, has a foil base. And the interesting thing about this plant is it's a part-time Faraday cage. So it only goes into the Faraday cage during the daytime. And this is what the growth looks like. So you can see it's very heavily retarded and deformed compared to our control Diphenbachia, which is outside of the cage. Now, this one is a very different cage also because it's made out of chicken wire and it has an open top to it. There's no wire on the top. And the rather curious thing about this is how deformed the plant goes when it's inside. And the reason why it's hooked up to a battery was I was trying to establish whether the cage collapsed the DC atmospheric voltage. And it appears that even hooked up to a one and a half volt battery, which can improve plant growth, it did not improve. And the Faraday cage effect took over and deformed the plant. So even an open top cage with large mesh, this is the same size mesh as used in the walls of my home, deformed the Diphenbachia. So this is our last Faraday cage plant and this is the full cage. So this is aluminum window mesh that you use for your window screens. And this one went in there stayed in there full time and it had a battery hooked up to it to replace the atmospheric voltage just in case the cage was collapsing the atmospheric voltage and as you can see we got another very deformed plant. So I can't run this experiment any longer but based on my previous experiments with Faraday cages is after about a year or so in the cage, the plant will eventually die. So these, it's December 2015 right now. And this is right around the time that the plants would actually die. So I'm gonna monitor this a little while longer. I can no longer grow the plants inside of the cages because I no longer have room to do that. But I'm going to keep the plants growing and I'm going to monitor them and see whether they do actually go on to die outside of the cage. But the thing that I would like people to take from this experiment is that life inside a Faraday cage is very, very different to life that is outside of a Faraday cage. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.